What's up you guys, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. I am coming at you right now. Let me set the scene. It is Wednesday afternoon. What time is it? 1.29 p.m. And I just made lunch. So I'm kind of on my lunch break right now. It is a gloomy day outside, very rainy. And I wanted to sit here and kind of have this be like our lunch break, like a lunch break little chat conversation type situation. So imagine you and me are sitting at a table or something in a cafeteria of some kind together, eating lunch or dinner or breakfast or a midnight snack, wherever. I don't know what time it is that you're watching this right now. I want to talk about burnout because I feel like that is something that I have been feeling so much lately. You know what? I don't even remember a time where I didn't feel this at this point. And let me explain why. Let me give you a little bit of a background into my situation right now. So I am a senior in college. If you are new here, hello. I mean, I need to eat this. I made avocado toast for lunch. It's very good. So I'm a senior in college and this semester obviously is very different. <laughs> to say the least. The way my school is handling it, we still are in person right now. Like we still have class in person. It's a hybrid model though. So some of the time we go in person and then some of the time we're online. That's what we've been doing since the beginning of the semester and it's November. We only have a couple more weeks until Thanksgiving break and then our finals are right after Thanksgiving break and then we're done for the semester. We're doing finals a couple weeks early this year. So that means that we had to condense the semester. So we didn't have any breaks throughout this whole thing. Typically you would get like a little long weekend or so like here and there. We haven't had any breaks so it's been really difficult and quite honestly suffocating and i have been feeling this way about school just for the past literally probably a couple months and i have talked to so many friends about it i talked to my beloved advisor about it and everybody is feeling the same way from what i've heard from other people and the way my friends have described it to me is so similar to what i feel you can literally see my knee with the band-aids on it from when i cut my own knee the other day with my nail so that's really good it always feels like when you have a lot of assignments on your plate or just tasks in general it feels like you're kind of gradually chipping away at them but then more things just get thrown on top of the pile so the pile just just never ends that's a big reason why i wanted to even talk about this in the first place because i feel like it's so prevalent right now also it's affecting me creatively your mental health if it's not doing well then it's going to affect every aspect of your life and i'm here to say that everybody goes through this at some point and it's completely normal and there's nothing wrong with me and there's nothing wrong with any of you if you are feeling this way or you have felt this way or you do end up feeling this way at some point like this is so normal and i know that people go through this all the time like people go through you know periods of feeling just very overwhelmed they go through periods of burnout all the time and pretty much what i wanted to share with you guys and the point of this little video conversation that we're having is that it will pass it will not last forever and i've kind of been thinking about some ways that i try to escape burnout or at least ride it out until that moment in my life passes like so for me that means how I'm getting through this semester because once the semester is over and my finals are done I have two months before next semester where I can decompress from all of this and regroup and recover from the burnout so that I can you know prepare to be burnt out in the spring semester right now as I'm looking at it it's kind of like you can't see the forest from the trees is that the is that the saying like you're in the forest right now so all you're seeing is what's around you if you look at it from 5,000 feet above like you'll see that it's only this big like to you it looks like it's surrounding you but in reality it's only this big it is really difficult to know how to keep yourself going mentally when you're experiencing this I know I have struggled with this for the past couple months it has been a daily struggle of me I, I have to literally talk to myself like in my head which might sound kind of weird but I do that all the time just because I have anxiety so I'm always constantly telling myself like you're okay you know what I mean and it's been that kind of thing for me like trying to figure out what to tell myself in order to get through this period last week or so i was <laughs> sitting on my bedroom floor you know just going through it a little bit and things would just come to my mind like different ways i don't know how to explain this i just started thinking about what is getting me through this like what i'm telling myself or what i'm doing that's getting me through this i just started thinking about it so i texted them all to myself so that i would remember them so that i could talk about them in a video because i think that it's really important to share these things so i'm glad that i did that because i know myself and i know that if i wouldn't have written them down then I would have forgotten immediately I actually went through my texts to myself and that makes it sound like I text myself a lot when I have videos that I'm posting I text myself the link or if I'm doing a sponsored post or something I'll text myself the caption and I don't just sit and have conversations with myself over text that'd be kind of I mean, but if you do that, that's fine. But anyway, I wrote them down in my little cute notebook. It's from Target, by the way. I just want to talk about them. This is what I kind of anchor my mind on. I'm feeling this way. And I finish eating this toast really quick and then start talking. All right, so I can't stop with my hair. So I'm going to change it. 
Anyway, let's begin. Ew, I hate this band. <laughs> I want to put my feet here though. I like putting my feet up on this part of my bookshelf, but like, mm. let's get to it, people. Number one, this is probably the most important thing that I keep in mind when I'm going through a period of burnout or feeling very overwhelmed by all of the things that I have to do. And it is don't look too far ahead. It's the same concept as take it one day at a time, but sometimes it's not even take it one day at a time. Sometimes it's literally take it hour by hour or task by task. You have to break it down to minute by minute, whatever increment that you need to mentally break down your time into in order for you to work through it. For example, I do this every day. I literally wake up, I immediately think about all the things that I have to do today, right? Piggybacking off of that, I think about all of the things that I have to do tomorrow. And then it ends up being all the things I have to do for the rest of the week. And then I'm like so far in the future, but I still have, you know, today in front of me. I overwhelm myself by thinking too far ahead into the future. Pretty much I make it so that I only focus on today. If I think about something that maybe I'm supposed to do tomorrow, I literally have to tell myself, don't think about that. I have to stop that thought in its tracks. You need to focus on the task at hand or the day at hand and get through that one day at a time, one hour at a time, one task at a time. That has been so effective for me. I literally have to tell myself so many times every single day, just focus on today. And then going off of that, I wrote to break it down to the absolute basics. And that's kind of going off of what I was saying about taking it task by task. There was an example of this that happened to me last week. I was feeling very overwhelmed about the upcoming few days and I remember I was showering this is when I started thinking about all this stuff and I literally stopped myself and I said what are you doing right now right now you're showering like focus on that task and then it even got to the point where I was breaking down what I was doing in the shower I was like okay I'm shampooing my hair right now okay now I'm conditioning my hair it's pretty much just me trying to bring myself back to the present moment and be present in that moment complete what I'm doing right now because that is all that I have control of is this physical moment right now next I said priority this is huge. I actually had a very long conversation with my advisor about this, about just how I've been feeling. And this is one of the things that she told me is pretty much that you need to take everything that you have to do. I basically have to figure out what my priorities are out of all the tasks that I have to do. What are the most important ones? While I'm obviously going to complete my assignments and I'm going to put effort in, like there are some assignments that I simply don't need to put as much effort in as others. Like if it's only worth five points versus if it's worth a hundred points, you know, you have got to prioritize because you cannot put all of your effort effort. You cannot put 100% of your effort into every single thing. You can't do it. And that's something that I have learned the hard way. I always spread myself too thin. That's another thing about being a perfectionist too, is like I try to do every single thing perfect. I've come to realize that, that is not possible. It isn't. And holding myself to that standard is not good. It's not healthy. It's not realistic. I have to let that go. And I have to realize that I cannot put 100% of my effort into everything that I do. So I need to choose what is truly important to me and what is important to the overall like grand scheme of my life and pretty much delegate my energy accordingly. So that I don't spread myself too thin. Going along with the whole perfectionism thing and the fact that it doesn't exist. Another thing that my advisor told me that stuck with me is to lower my bar. That has to do with the standards that I set for myself and everything that I do. Like I said, I try, I want to do every single thing in my life with a hundred percent energy. I want to make everything perfect. So like my bar, my standards bar for myself is so high. I have to give myself permission to lower it a little. I'm not saying like lower it to the damn ground. So in my mind, if I'm not doing everything to this level, then it sucks. But to other people and to my professors who are giving me grades, if I do things, so say here's my like typical level, say if I start doing things to this level, it's probably still gonna be good. I have to give myself permission to lower my standards for myself a little bit in some areas in order to conserve energy and put that energy towards the things that matter. So it, those two go hand in hand, like prioritizing things and lowering your bar but also just if you're a perfectionist in general like I am you got to lower your bar anyways because if you're like me your bar is perfection and perfection is not attainable the next thing on this list is to put yourself first what I mean by that is if you're in a period where you have so much going on do not be at everybody else's beck and call I am the kind of person that is always there for people when they need me and that's just I'm always like that and that's great that that's a great quality to have honestly but you need to be careful because there gets to be a point where you're so available for everybody else all the time that you forget to be available for yourself. And that's what I mean by this. Now, I'm not saying that don't help people when they need advice or something. Like, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying take that energy that you're putting into everybody else all the time and 
put it towards yourself. For example, like if your friends ask you to hang out and you typically would say yes, but right now you have so much that you have to do, so many assignments, and you know that if you go and hang out that you will not get them done, you need to put yourself first in this situation and say, no, I need to get these things done. It'll be better for me to just not go out this time. Obviously still care about other people. I'm not saying don't do that, but I'm saying cater to yourself more. My next thing is you don't owe anyone an explanation. What I mean is like, if you say that you can't hang out, like, let's go with that example again. Like if you say to your friends that you can't hang out or you can't do what whatever, you can't FaceTime right now or you can't answer texts right now, you don't owe them an explanation or an apology for that matter because you are doing things that you need to do. Honestly, if they're your real friends, they won't be expecting an explanation or an apology from you. So if you feel the need to explain yourself or to apologize to people for not being available all the time for whatever they want, they're probably not good friends. I'm not gonna lie. You don't owe anybody an explanation for prioritizing yourself. And then another thing that I struggle with is stop feeling bad for doing nothing. It depends on how much time that you can devote to that, but at the very least, just like an hour where you don't do a task, you just kind of like, maybe you watch TikToks or you watch YouTube videos or you listen to music or you do something like that that you enjoy that makes you happy. I will literally do that sometimes here and there, like throughout the day, I will give myself like an hour break in between things that I'm doing. But afterwards, I will literally be like, oh my God, I could have been working on XYZ this entire time, but I was doing nothing and being lazy. Like, what the f***? That's literally how my brain works. It's probably the anxiety. Don't feel bad for doing nothing. Don't feel bad for resting. Resting is not a bad thing and it's not unproductive either. You can have a productive day while still taking breaks. You could take a nap for a couple hours and you could still have a productive day. Taking a break and taking some time to rest is not unproductive. It's actually very productive, if you ask me, because it promotes productivity. If I try to just crank workout, like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, and I don't have any type of break in the middle, I fizzle out, and then I have no energy, so if I have anything to do at the end of the day, <laughs> screw it. Like, there's no way. Do not let yourself get too, so low, because then it'll take so much longer for you to recharge and recoup in order to keep going. Don't feel bad for doing nothing, because breaks are a really good thing and you need to take them. These last things are less about your mindset and more about your environment because your environment that you're in is also very, very important when it comes to getting yourself out of a period of burnout. I say this all the time, but it's so true that my room is my sanctuary. It 100% is. I have put so much time and effort into decorating it the way that it is because I want it to be cozy. I want to be in my room and feel relaxed. I want to step in there and the ambiance and the vibe makes me feel good better. That's what I want for my space. One of the most important things going along with that is to keep your room or your space clean. I literally just cleaned my room this weekend. Actually deep cleaned. I vacuumed. I dusted. Oh my god. It felt so good to do that. In like a weird way it made it feel like a weight was lifted off my shoulders because my space was cleaner and fresher. And I seriously a firm believer that your space directly affects your mind. A clean room for me is a clean mind. If my room is cluttered, it gives me anxiety. And when it's clean, it makes me feel better. It makes me feel more at peace, more relaxed. It's easier for me to unwind in a clean, organized space. I could literally talk about that for Ever because I just think it's so important. The next thing that goes along with your room or just your living space in general or whatever space that you have is to change something. For me, this past weekend, I put up some of my Christmas decorations. Changing something I think is so helpful. It could be anything. Maybe you put lights up in a new place or maybe you switch the way that your bed is facing, rearrange your furniture, add something. I don't know. Changing your environment is really important, especially when you're feeling burnt out because like a lot of the time when you feel burnt out, it's because you're doing the same thing every day all the time days kind of blend together and you're always just doing the same thing so introducing some type of change small big whatever whatever's feasible for you is really really helpful and going along with that change something in general pick up a new hobby i mean i know i'm sitting here saying like you feel like you don't have time but like i said take breaks literally schedule it if you have to block off a time a couple hours or so and be like paint I don't know, cook. Something that you like to do. For me, it is learning to play the piano. Well, piano slash organ, I guess. We have an organ downstairs in our house that used to belong to my grandparents. I am finally learning how to play actual songs on it. Like I learned how to read music when I was younger. I still remember what it, what it means and stuff. Like I can look at it and I can read it, but I'm trying to get better and it's so nice. The other day I was having a really stressful day. I just had a lot on my plate and it was very overwhelming. And I just sat down at the organ and I started playing 
and I sat there for like two hours. Before I started playing, I was just so worked up and frustrated and agitated. At the end of it, I felt better. Just changing something in your routine, maybe wake up at a different time, maybe eat something different for breakfast, get a different coffee in the morning, try something new. Just changing anything, disrupting your everyday routine that is making you feel burnt out with something new is really, really helpful. That was my last thing that I had written down. Yeah, I actually think that I may have said something relevant, so that's good. Even if one person listens to me ramble about things and resonates with anything that I say, this is worth it to me because that's all I wanna do, provide somebody with an idea or a perspective that they may not have thought of before. And that's really what life is about, honestly. I just think it's so important to have other people that you can talk to about things or ask for advice about things because everybody has different life experiences and that's what I love. And I've said this before, but that's what I love so much about YouTube is that every single person is unique and every single person has their own perspective and their own life experiences that have shaped that perspective. So if you're looking at something and you see it a certain way and you tell somebody else about it and then they look at it through their own lens just like probably 99.99% going to be different than yours because your lives are different you're gonna get a different perspective and they may say something or offer a suggestion that really really helps you just didn't think of before because you didn't look at it the way that they did that's like where I get the advice that I give to people it's just a bunch of things that I've compiled from different things that I've read over the years or advice that other people had given me Some of it's you know things that I've kind of came to my own conclusions about a lot of it is from things that I've read things that I've heard things that I've seen things that other people have said I just think that's really important so if you have somebody in your life a friend a family member that you trust and you you want to talk to them and get advice from them or maybe even just bounce ideas or thoughts off of them I 100% think that you should do that if you don't have somebody like that in your life that's what I'm here for I want to be that person for anybody who needs it because we all need it we all need at least one person final remarks you guys can do this I believe in you if you guys are feeling burnt out overwhelmed any type of feeling like that right now i get it believe me and it's so hard changing your mindset is so hard because it's something that you have to do intentionally every single day it might get to the point where you feel like it's not even helping but trust me in the long run making a conscious effort to change your mindset and to think about things differently or see things differently it is so beneficial with that being said that is the end of today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you liked it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you've stayed until this point in the video, comment down below. I'm a real one because you're a real one. If you want to see more videos from me, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I post a new video every single Sunday. And if you forget that I post a new video every single Sunday, or if you just want to get notified right when I post a new video, make sure you turn on my post notifications is a little bell icon so that you can get notified right when I post a new video video. And yeah, I think that's it. I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.